Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade, and we have a great show for you today. Nike will once again make Kobe shoes. Co-Rider's dream shoes are almost here. The week's hottest releases, and of course, this week's Hard Pass. As always, we're gonna start this off with some hot takes. The world of basketball cards has found its latest mark. I mean, its latest fan, and it's Drake. Apparently, he caught the bug while watching live streams of people pulling cards that are worth thousands, and in some cases, millions of dollars. And now, he's chasing triple logo mans and Michael Jordan rookie cards with some of the biggest names in the hobby. Good for him. And now we wait for PSA and prisms and rookie patch autographs to get mentioned in his next album. By the way, if Drake ever gets interested in, say, Marvel precious metal gems, I may know a guy. Uh, the Turtle Dub Yeezys are rumored to be making a comeback in 2022. Man, I cannot wait for the discourse between the OGs who dismissed the retros as not having the same quality and for the kids who got them to complain that the old are just a bunch of haters. And I'm going to be on the sidelines watching sneaker Twitter burn because I went through that with Jordan retros and couldn't give a shit about Yeezy retros. And when it retros again in a few years, you will all become what you feared. The out of touch olds. Michigan invited Colin Kaepernick to serve as an honorary captain for their spring games. Huh, all right. Uh, the Off-White Nike Blazer Low were released on April 8th, marking the first posthumous release of the Off-White and Nike sneakers to drop since the passing of Virgil Abloh. It's going to be interesting to see how Nike handles future Off-White releases. Like, they can go back to the archives and use dozens, if not hundreds of samples as inspiration for a while, but at some point, there will be an Off-White and Nike collab that Virgil never touched. I wonder what the reaction will be when that happens. And speaking on that topic, let's move on to our next segment, which deals with a similar situation that could happen in the future. So, fantastic news broke just as we were recording our episode last week. Nike and Vanessa Bryant have come to an agreement that will allow the brand to continue to produce new Kobe Bryant and Gianna Bryant signature shoes. Along with this new agreement is a commitment to the Mamba and Mambasita Sports Foundation, where 100% of net proceeds from the sale of Gigi branded sneakers will go to the foundation. Not only that, though, the two parties are committed to building a youth basketball center in Southern California that will further the message of the Mamba mentality. This is a dramatic reversal from the past 12 months which saw Nike and the Bryan estate go their separate ways when they could not come to an agreement. At that time, Vanessa expressed her frustration and disappointment with the brand because fans were having difficulty buying the final Nike Kobe's that were set to release as their agreement expired. And then there was the leak of the pair that's now called the Nike Kobe 6 Mamba Sita Sweet 16, making their way to a handful of collectors and NBA players before the Bryant family. So you can see why Vanessa might not be interested in renewing the partnership right away, especially since it's come out since Kobe's passing that he was exploring other options, including building his own sneaker brand after his commitment with Nike was set to end. So where do we go from here? Let's take a look at it from a few different angles, starting with Nike. Uh, pro tip for the swoosh. The Kobe 6 Pro Tro Mamba Cita Sweet 16 that you've been sitting on in your warehouses or in storage containers in the port of Los Angeles for the past several months, make more of them. This is not the time to keep Kobe sneakers limited. Make them like you make Jordan 11s during the holidays. I guarantee anybody at Nike that whatever they are thinking right now is the amount of Kobe sneakers that they think are going to sell, they should double or triple it. The Kobe 6 Pro Tro Mamba Cita Sweet 16, when it actually releases, is going to be the hottest sneaker of 2022. You're not just selling that shoe to sneakerheads and opportunistic resellers. You're going to sell it to Kobe fans, one of the most passionate and enthusiastic fan bases out there. And it's a worldwide fan base, man. And that bond has only strengthened after his tragic passing. Anytime Mamba traveled overseas, it was a frenzy just to catch a glimpse of him. You were selling that Kobe 6 to those people. I would be bold to even say that Nike should drop the price of these shoes as a peace offering to all the disappointed fans these past two years. But we all know that's a pipe dream. What really can't happen are stories of angry fans who are unable to buy the shoes because Nike did not make enough pairs to satisfy demand and resale prices are anywhere between four to six times the retail price. When you announce that proceeds from the sale of these shoes are going to the Mamba and Mamba Cita Sports Foundation, you should make more than a million pairs of these shoes. After a few weeks later, you announce in your shareholder meeting that you donated millions of dollars to the foundation. That's an easy PR win as you're going to get right now. And they need it bad. 
because nobody is really out there rooting for the swoosh to succeed. Even Bernie Sanders took a shot at Nike's price gouging tactics not that long ago, galvanizing the sneaker community in a way you rarely see. Nobody likes sneakers app. GR Jordan 1s are one step closer to being $200. A growing number of former fans keep claiming they are done with the brand. And while they claim to be fixing the bot problem, there haven't been enough wins on Saturday to satisfy the people. Flooding the market with the Mamba C the Sixes is such a no-brainer of a plan that I have no faith it's actually going to be executed correctly. But hey, prove me wrong, Nike. But what does Nike do after the Pro Tros have been sold and things, for lack of a better term, normalize? I feel like sales of Kobe's are going to be strong for at least a few years, especially once we get to Pro Tros of the Nike Kobe 8. I can't even imagine the fervor that's going to be for reissues of the Christmas, Easter, and All-Star colorways, not to mention underrated gems like the Purple Platinum or the Milk Snake or the Pit Viper or the Mamba Curial. I think Nike can get away with bringing back these old faves along with dropping new colorways of the Kobe 1s through 8 for a while. I would love to see Nike release these player exclusives that DeMar DeRozan and PJ Tucker have in their vaults. In fact, here's a quick top 5 Kobe PEs that Nike needs to give us as easy to buy general releases. Number 5, Anthony Davis's McFly Kobe 6s. Number 4, Devin Booker's Valley themed Kobe 6s. Number 3, Joel Lloyd's Golden Kobe 5s. Number 2, PJ Tucker's Cheetah Yeezy Sample inspired Kobe 6s. And number 1, DeMar DeRozan's Argentina Nike Kobe 4 PE. I can probably think of like at least a dozen more Kobe PEs I've seen on the court, but you get the point, Nike. Stop hoarding these cool colorways for the players. Like, at least give us those Argentina 4s, man. At some point, even Jordan Retros sit on shelves. So what happens when Kobe's sneakers are quote, normal again and sit on shelves like they did prior to his passing? People forget, but you could easily buy stuff like the Kobe 4 Draft Day and Kobe 5 Chaos Pro Tros at Foot Locker as recently as December 2019. Does that actually mean bringing in Eric Avar design new Kobe signature shoes? Do they introduce an entirely new model inspired by GG? I think we can all agree that other than a handful of special colorways, none of the Kobe ADs captured our imagination. So if they were going to make a new Kobe model without input from Mamba himself, would it contribute to the legacy or possibly water it down? I bet you there are more than a few people out there who think Jordan brand should have stopped making new flagship Air Jordans after the 14. Will we see the same play out with Kobe? I'm curious to see. And there is one last angle that I want to cover with this story, and that's Adidas. This year, the Three Strikes will be bringing back a handful of sneakers with ties to Kobe, including ones that were his signature shoes during his time with the brand from the late 90s to the early 2000s. Now, we've seen Adidas bring these shoes back before and integrated into their crazy branding from the mid-2010s, calling the Adidas KB8, the Crazy 8, and the EQ2 Elevation, the Crazy 97, and so on. I have to say, I didn't really give that decision much attention back then, but after Kobe's passing, I can't say that I'm comfortable with Adidas continuing to call Kobe's shoes crazy anymore. What I would be comfortable with is Adidas finding a way to reach an agreement with Vanessa Bryant and maybe Nike to call those shoes by their proper names again. I know that Pipe Dream has about the same chance of happening as Kanye working with Jordan brand, but I like to think of it as a win-win situation for all parties. Look, if Balenciaga can convince real luxury brands to do lazy collabs with them, then Adidas and Nike can work together for an actual greater good, in a sneaker sense, of course. Like, one of the coolest ideas of the past 10 years in sneakers was the Kobe Prelude Pack, a look back at Kobe's run with Nike leading up to the reveal of the game-changing Nike Kobe 9 Elite. We got retros of the Kobe 1, Kobe 2, and others way earlier than we thought, proving that there was good stuff before Kobe went low. Nike would revisit the idea with the faded black pack as part of Bryant's retirement. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Nike tried something like this in a few years when LeBron James decides to hang it up. If Adidas was able to pitch, oh, I don't know, a, a fade to gold pack. Yes, fade to gold doesn't make sense, but Kowire thought he was so clever when he made it up in 2016 that he hasn't let it go. Any, anyway, a fade to gold pack would be a complete sneaker retrospective from the Adidas Top 10 2000s to the EQT elevations to the KB8s to the Kobe 1 to the Hirachi 2K4s to the Kobe 2s to the Kobe 7s all the way up to the Kobe 11. And all proceeds went to the Mamba and Mamba Cita Foundation. Again, 
Easy public relations victory, guys. Nike doesn't look selfish. Adidas gets to rebrand the shoes by their proper names again, and we sneakerheads get to appreciate the totality of Kobe Bryant's sneaker history. It's something that has a Vince McMahon chance in hell of actually happening, but I thought I would put it out there just in case somebody at Nike or Adidas was watching. And so I can take credit for it, of course. But first things first, Nike needs to do the right thing by all of us with the Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro Mamba C to Sweet 16. Let's not screw this up and keep them limited and have sneaker Twitter throw a tantrum yet again. It's the right thing to do for Mamba, for Gigi, for the Bryant family, and for the millions of fans out there who miss them. All right. It's time for the heat check, where we bring you everything that's dropping this week. We have the Polaroid Nike SB Dunk Low on the 5th for 120, the Women's Air Jordan 1 Low Sherpa Fleece on the 5th for 110, the Women's Nike Dunk High FLS on the 6th for 120, the Women's Nike Dunk High Vintage Black on the 7th for 125, the Reebok Question Mid Mocha on the 8th for 160, Reebok Shaq Gnosis Big Aristotle on the 8th for 150, the Off-White Nike Blazer Low on the 8th, the Air Jordan 5 Jade on April 9th for $200, and then the pick of the week is the Union Air Jordan 2 on the 8th for $225. And this is going to be Union's next trick. They're going to make people like the Air Jordan 2. After critically acclaimed runs with the Air Jordan 1 and Air Jordan 4, this is going to be Union's toughest test yet, an Air Jordan 2 that people like at face value and not just for the hype. I don't see it happening, to be quite honest. The Jordan 2s have always been polarizing, and I don't think this release changes that. It will sell out and resell for a pretty penny, for sure, but if you think this will lead to a renaissance for the 2s, or more accurately, a genuine appreciation for the 2s for the first time, I have some Just Don Jordan 2s I'd like to show you. And now for a heat check on the Nike Air Penny 1 Home, aka the sneaker that co-writer has been waiting for ever for and won't shut up about on this show. I think we've dedicated no less than five segments to that shoe in that colorway. It might be the single most covered topic on this show besides our constantly evolving thoughts on Kanye. So official images have made their online debut, which means a release is imminent. I have to say though, it's a little bittersweet. Like, sure, I'm mildly annoyed every time we go over the script for this show and co-writer wants to throw in a Penny One reference, but there's a part of me that's gonna miss it when these shoes actually release and co-writer gets his 10 pairs. Yes, he's going to try to get 10 pairs. And you know what? I'm gonna be happy for him. But there is a little part of me that wants to tease him that the shade of blue on the jeweled swoosh is a little off. And Nike's going to reveal that this is not a true retro of the Penny One home. Hmm. Maybe I'll still do that. I don't know. Anyway, it's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go. Like the pearl clutching over what happened at the Oscars last weekend. Look, we're not going to relitigate the incident, and I don't have to show you pictures or video. It's done. It's over, people have apologized, comedy tours are kicking off, investigations are underway, and the fallout will annoyingly continue to have a ripple effect for years to come. But yo, that ripple, it ended for me by the next morning, because guess what? That was nothing more than two rich people getting into rich people I can't relate to it, you can't relate to it, and D-list comedians who think this is going to ruin their crappy routines can't relate to it either. Most of the takes were nothing more than self-serving garbage. It was either, how can I make this moment about me? Or how can I use this moment to take a performative stance against an unrelated thing I don't like? Seriously, if you're a comedian who is suddenly scared to do open mic night because of that slap, A, your material probably sucks, and B, you've never had to deal with the consequences of your actions. Anyways, to slightly alter a famous bit one of them had in the 90s, now, I'm not saying he should have slapped him, but I understand. Not justifying the what, have no relation to the who, can't comprehend the where, but I understand the why. Not condoning it, don't get it twisted, but I understand. I also understand that when you do something that reckless in that setting, you better be prepared to face the consequences that come with it. The award shouldn't be rescinded like some concerned trolls have suggested. If scumbags like Harvey Weinstein and Roman Polanski and Woody Allen don't have to give back their awards, we're not starting now. But not being invited back for an indeterminate amount of time? That feels appropriate. There's levels to this, and what happened last Sunday doesn't even come close to the heinous things other award winners have done and gotten away with for decades. What we need to do is go on with our lives and not think this is going to ruin polite society, because brother, 
That ship sailed a long time ago. Support those in your life who are clearly going through something. Realize celebrities are flawed people too and not just inspirational quotes that you're not even sure what they said. Pay attention to the news because there are people halfway across the world who wish a rich person slap was the most pressing thing on their minds and hope that Hypebeast is self-aware enough to realize that they deserve to get internet slapped every time they post about NFTs. Where's the lie in that meme, Hypebeast? Anyway, that's going to do it for the show today. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade. I'll see you next week. If you'd possibly like to be featured in a future episode, call us at 818-493-9325. Leave a short message, your socials if you want, no more than 30 seconds, and you might be featured in a future episode. Oh, and before we go, since we're recording before the weekend, a few prediction. UNC makes Duke fans cry again, Attack on Titan gets a movie finale, and Bianca, Roman, and Cody win at WrestleMania. Oh, and The Rock shows up in his Project Rocks to challenge Roman for SoFi Mania in LA next year. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.